Learn to be super successful. Subscribe to my channel, me head. A club. Again, the membership committee and the finance committee. Now, they've got special deals because clubs and um, uh, preppy kind of stuff is out of, out of a fad now. So if you're less than 40, you pay less. If you're less than 35, you pay less. If you're less than 30, they give you 18 years to pay. I mean, there's all kinds of packages now. Um, the, I would have fired that asshole first time. But he, she, he moved his whole house. Is this, he moved, and so she felt guilt. Whether it was Muslim guilt, Jewish guilt, or Protestant guilt, she felt guilt. She upended the whole guy's life, and then she had to ax him. That's life. Some of you, some of you aren't capable of firing anybody. Yeah, well, no, no, you don't have to just put up cap in his ass. That means a bullet in his fucking head. That's it. You don't, there's no, there's no, you don't have to, you're a tyrant. You don't have to come up with a fucking reason for anything. You're gone, asshole. That's it. You got to make decisions like that. You know, if you have to think about it, you're dead. And if you can't do that, you better have a motherfucker on the board that can Otherwise, you're going to die. It's not the people you fire that kill your business. It's the people you don't fire that kill your fucking business. Oh, of course. That's why he's there. And he'll say, why? I thought we already fired him normally. Why is that fucking bum still there? Another thing she alluded to, uh, the, um, or she didn't allude to it, is that um, you go to... Some of the kids, some of you are really piss poor communicators. Go to improv. Learn how to, you know, like uh, Grant Cardone and these guys, sell me a pencil. Like, uh, go to improv, improvisation. I mean, communication skills is what some people say got me where I am. But I'm a, I wasn't always a world class communicator. I failed public speaking in high school, I got a D in public speaking in the university. But, um, you know, I gave 200 plus speeches when I was in, on Wall Street. And then, I, you know, after about 100, I had people throw plates at me, rolls at me, giving speeches. And after about 140, 50 speeches, I was a world class motherfucker. Right now, I mean, you, you know, you guys, I said yesterday when I looked at you, you wouldn't say shit if it was in your mouth. Even even the loudmouth Irishman. Another thing she brought up, and then I'll open it up to your comments and questions, um, is that um, these people, it's unheard of for a board to move from, I mean, for a woman. Unheard of. I never heard of it before. She didn't pay for their move. They moved. The guys wouldn't move across the street for you. Do you understand the difference? She's extraordinary, the Viking bitch. I mean, she, you know, she just, uh, and she, she was kind of low-key there, but she's a pushy bitch. She's a pushy bitch in a good way. She, and she says, I want to add value and all that, all that bullshit, you know. And she, she really does want to help people. Fuck them. I'm on board. Pull up the fucking gangplank. I'm Irish. Fuck you. It's like on the Titanic. You know? Um, she talked about transfer of licenses. Now, I'm getting ahead of myself, but while I'm thinking about it, health care is a piece of cake except for when you're in substance abuse and things that need transfer licenses, I alluded to it yesterday, is that licenses transfer, it's very difficult to transfer license from person to person. It's easy to transfer organization to organization. And so when you're buying some of the things you need to ask, what licenses do you have and what licenses can we transfer first and substance abuse, the toughest states are New Jersey and Florida. 
They're motherfuckers to get licenses transferred, even company to company. And we've had a lot of uh, uh, deals that have waned and didn't happen. And of course, then the seller, the, the seller gets seller's remorse. You know, they think they're going to transfer and be out of there uh, in 60, 90, 120 days, and it takes a year to transfer the license. That deal, yeah, I mean, you're going to spend all your time trying to keep that deal alive instead of going out and finding no, more money and more deals. So you've got to ask those questions. And the people on your board will know that. Your chairman will know that. Remember, and I'm, I'm talking about it now, you got a chairman. You're not the CEO, so forget about it. You got a CEO. You got a CFO. The CEO and CFO are executive directors, like I said yesterday. Then you've got two industry experts that are non-executive directors. And if you're going to get in substance abuse, these, uh, these directors have to have substance abuse uh, uh, experience. Then you've got your accountant, not your CFO, you've got another accountant, a big four guy there, and then you've got a, a big time lawyer there. And the big time lawyer is to keep your lawyers honest, outside lawyers, and your uh, uh, CFO and your accountant are there to keep the accountants honest. Now, I don't mean honest, but I mean, the, the, when, when they roll a fee, and when they agree to roll fees, success fees, and, and they, there can be a tendency to pad the bill, shall we say. In other words, instead of 200, 400,000. Because they know you're not paying for it because you're financing it with somebody else's money. You understand what I'm saying? And so there might be an inkling to perhaps increase the bill more than it should be. But when you've got an accountant from a big four and you've got a CFO from a big four and you've got a lawyer from a big time international firm, they know what the fucking bill should be. And you want plausible deniability. You got all these people advising you. I took advice, as they say here in this country. And as he said, you asked the chairman, that's exactly right. And she, the general that she's got is a, a great guy, hard ass. Even in today's world, to become a, a general in the military or an admiral, uh, I mean, you're a hard ass. You're a hard ass. Exactly the opposite of what you are. It's all right that you're a cunt. It's all right that you snivel and cry. But you better have be surrounded by Oprah Winfrey, God lover, was a softie. And she surrounded herself by animals. But most of you just, you know, they're going to bend you over and fuck you for practice. And that's the guy, and nobody tells you that. When you go to all these other things, they know when they look at you, they're going to bend you over and fuck you in the ass. But they don't tell you because they don't want you to come to the next Golden Jubilee seminar and be part of the inner, that's bullshit. There, is no, there are no upsells here. I'm telling you the balls ass truth. So you better have some tough fuckers on the board. And again, she said it in a nice way, not like you. A weak cunt. Now, all these guys and gals aren't, you know, and Nelly's pretty tough. But I mean, he's not me. So when you're recruiting, when we talk about the recruitment of the boards, as she said, she uses Google and uh, LinkedIn. But I mean, 90% of the boards that are built by you guys are LinkedIn. The premier one, the whatever, the not the free one, but... There's a premier one, uh, you pay, I don't know, 80, 100, I don't know what you pay for it. But that's the one. Um, the, um, another thing she said the, um, was um, her lawyers, outside lawyer, it, it, he's a prince, but he sees big dollar signs down the road. He should have billed her two, 300 grand instead of 70. I probably, his partners made him send a bill. When are we going to bill that bitch? And the account's the same. Now, on the smaller deals, your, your a board will be more than qualified to do the due diligence and provide that report that I gave you, the, um, 
that's done by an accountant because that was a big deal. But your board, they may be reticent to do the due diligence on your first acquisition, but they're certainly capable of, you know, one, $2 million deal is certainly capable. They have the expertise easily. Over and above that, you want a big firm because if they fuck up, you want somebody to sue that has malpractice insurance. If your own board fucks up the due diligence, what are you going to do, sue your own board members? No. You know what I mean? Even in Dublin or in Belfast. I once asked, who are the biggest crooks, Belfast or Dublin? I don't want to, I'm not going to repeat the answers, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, uh, um, okay, now open up the uh, comments about uh, uh, Rebecca. She's, she's a fine gal. And she's a full-time mom. Just think of your fucking hag wives you've got. Getting their nails done, going to the beauty parlor. Fucking hags. And like I told her, why did you decide to have a second family? Because she adopted four. Well, you know, they needed parents. And, oh, fuck. No, she really wants to help people. She's a goody two-shoes, but a bitch. Okay, hand was up. Yes, sir, in the back. She said if a bank won't do a deal if they think it's a bad deal. So Say that again? Uh, a bank won't do a deal if they think... The reason a bank will not do a deal is... It's because, because it's shitty. I looked at your deal. You know how you, you, some of you listed deals? I'd be embarrassed to put that on paper. What's wrong with you people? You wouldn't know a deal of a bitch in the dick or the vagina. None, none of the deals that I saw cash flowed. Why would you do it? Because you're fucking stupid. You've never had somebody show you what a deal looks like. And unless you're dealing with motivated sellers, 800,000 to 50. You heard that with your own ears, didn't you? And to the best of my knowledge, she didn't fuck him or blow him. To the best of my knowledge. You'd probably give 950 because you're fucking so thick. We're going to show you how you're going to make them pay you to take the deal. Then pay you to take the deal. I wouldn't have given the guy 50. He would have had to pay me 100. And the infamous word of Bruce the Whipple, you don't ask, you don't get. Are you going to say something? Or are you just moving that mic over there to brush your teeth with it? Don't act like you know everything. Yep. Well, you don't. <clears throat> but if your board doesn't know everything, something's wrong. If you have to go outside your board to get information, something ain't right, as they say. Something's not right. Now, in my particular case, and this sounds braggadocious as hell, but I've done so many deals. I mean, I rarely have to get anybody's second opinion from anybody. Because, I, you know, I've done it before. I've done it before. And the... Uh, and, uh, you know... Sometimes I wish I didn't have so much experience because all the times I got fucked. And she, you heard the comment about ethnicity. She, she, she tried to make it as polite as possible. Most of, most of the ethnic groups in this thing, in this room, are whores. That's just the way it is. And you know, we had... Um, a um, couple of seminars we had seven Middle Eastern countries represented. And we, they were trying to decide amongst themselves who was the biggest whore, thief, crook. And they said they're all whore, thief, crooks. But which of the seven? It was an interesting conversation to hear. Huh? Yes. Egypt was the biggest thief or crook. Egyptians. Yes, they did. Which I wouldn't agree. 
because I'd never been fucked by an Egyptian, so, you know, um, but so, the rest. Now, I've had tremendous experience in the Middle East. I mean, my Muslim brothers have been nice, nice, nice to me, so I got no complaints. But I don't know anybody else that can say that. I mean, you go to that part of the world, you're going to get fucked. Unless you got one of them as your partner. But you're going to just, you just might as well bend over, grab your cheeks, and enjoy the ride. That's just the way it is. Same in the Indian uh, subcontinent. I mean, it's, that's just the way it is. It's your pay price to action. Fucked in the ass in a bad way. And don't bullshit yourself. Same South America. I mean, that's just it. It's your pay price to action. Comments about the young... Yes, ma'am. Uh, so, Mr. Pena, this is the standard due diligence? No, no, no. That is a... Uh, not standard. Every firm has a different one. You're going to get a link. You're going to get... Well, you got two links. You're going to... Everybody has due diligence questions. Your lawyers will have a separate three or four, five hundred questions. Your accountants will have three or four, five hundred. You have within the documents you're going to get in the mega, whatever the fuck I call it, you're going to have a uh, hundred due diligence questions that we put together at a hardcore. That is uh, um, a BDO uh, due diligence. Quality of earnings. They call it quality of earnings. In other words, you give them, you're going to buy ABC company and you give them ABC's numbers for the last year, actually probably in the last three years, and they look at, and they, that report comes back and tells you whether there's a, pro, a low probability or a high probability that they can repeat those numbers. That's what that is. It's called quality earnings. And one of the things when the, you have the outside firms doing the due diligence for you, it's really important that all of a sudden they don't show up after five weeks and they tell you, oh, this, this, this is a turkey pig. You say, as soon as you start seeing red flags, I want to know about it. As soon as you, I mean, because you can stop, you know, instead of them spending $300,000 doing due diligence on a $25 million deal, uh, when they, they start to see red flags, and I want to see amber flags, not just red, because I know better than them, well, this is going to turn to shit, and I can just cut it off. And your board should know. And in that particular deal, it's the first time in 50 years I ever saw the price go up after due diligence. And they're not doing an audit. They're doing due diligence, which is, is, is a qualified review. But it's got their name on it. And that is, I think, the second to the last draft, the one I just gave you. And there's things on there most of you kids have never even thought of. You should know all this. I'm talking to you, Burka. Do you know all that? And she's a sophisticated, educated financial person. So much for education, huh? Should have gone and got that Pendeja MBA. You know? Then you could just be another one of the ones that don't know anything. I used to, they used to say, saliva is such running down Dan's face when he sees these new MBAs come in from Goldman Sachs, and I just said, oh, gee, I'm on a fucking good. I used to get a heart on. I couldn't get up from the table. Ooh, how many of them are there? Because they don't know anything. I normally have more experience than the whole other side of the team. Cumulatively, me, one person. And your board will have, and when you write your mission statement on that shit, we have 315 years experience, 82 zillion dollars in deals, uh, 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 900 deals. And that all counts. And when you put, when we talk about it, and you put your, um, uh, your chairman's profile, and your CFO's profile, and your CEO's profile, and your two industry experts' profile, and your accountant and your lawyer's profile, you don't even need your profile. They won't even miss it because you, you're not adding any fucking value to the transaction. And when you show up for the first board meeting, that's why you don't have board meetings. You don't have meetings. And they look at you and they go, and they all look around, and instantaneously, they all come to the same conclusion. What the fuck are we here for him for? And why is he getting 67% of the deal? 
instant fucking taneously. They'll throw you out on your fucking head. Especially if you're a dwarf like you. Instantaneously, they figure out the Burka bitch has no experience. All she's got is education. You understand what I'm saying? So when I tell you not to meet with these motherfuckers before you got a deal, but when you got a deal on the plate, on the table, and they see the money, then their greed glands. Well, fuck, maybe, maybe we can stay for a while. But if they meet without the deal on the table, they just cut your balls off. Hasburg or not. You understand? Yet you're still going to have meetings before. Every time, at least five or six of you. Then you're going to go on Reddit and say the fucking thing doesn't work. You won't say you got thrown out because you're a fucking moron. You realize you add no value, don't you? You get it? It's like, it's like um, going to a bodybuilding contest like some of you are built. You got no muscles, you got no dick, yet you're standing there with a guy. I mean, why would you? Now, you understand that, don't you? It's the same. Yet, I know, I can probably pick which one of you is going to do it to. Comments about uh, the Viking bitch. Yes, sir. How did it come to her attention about the CO? You know who told her? Oh, uh, one of the employees. Didn't tell her, told somebody else. And the last thing you add to your, um, your comp uh, corporate structure is human resources. I think HR is worthless as tits on a board, but anyway. The last thing you add is HR. So some, somebody, somebody will always rat you out. That's a guarantee. You don't have to worry about that. It's like uh, the poor health secretary, what's his name, that uh, the, that picture got produced. Yeah, what's his name? Yeah, yeah. Hancock, that's a great name. Anyway, and he, he, he's under pressure for resigning, not because he's cheating on his wife of nine kids, but uh, because he... Uh, uh, he, uh, he, he um, broke the, uh, what do you call it, the COVID rules, you know, sticking his tongue down that whore's throat. Nobody's mentioned that he's, his wife, uh, 14 kids, nobody. Because nobody gives a shit. You get it? They only give a shit that he broke the COVID rules. That's where we are. Nobody cares that he's a philandering fucking... Muff diver. You don't know, see, you're so fucking stupid. The English used to rule two thirds of the world with something called, I said yesterday, gunboat diplomacy. They didn't give a fuck what anybody thought. And now, fuck. But I knew it in 81 when I came here, and I knew I was going to rape the financial public here. I knew that I could stick my dick wherever the fuck I wanted, financially speaking. Because you couldn't hurt my feelings. I'm an American, you can't hurt my feelings. I was right. And I'm still here fucking them for practice. And talking about it. In Ireland, you'd be like this. The bitch. Anything else? Yes, sir. So after she got an $800,000 deal for 50 grand, she turned around. Which is now making, what did she say? That's what I wanted to bring up, 1.4? Yes, million, yeah. millions. So question on top of that, do you see that's typical? No, it's not typical, but it's possible. Now, in her case, she could see. In your case, the board will see because you don't know shit. You don't know shit, okay? You don't know shit from Shinola. She, because, you know, she's a healthcare pro. And some of the healthcare pros, you know, have an advantage. 
the doctors don't have an advantage because most uh, medical doctors don't know shit. Because I've got doctors that are doing this that don't know shit, that marvel that she knows so much. Just because you went to medical school, and the surgery I was going to perform, I talked about it in one of the YouTubes. Brain surgery I was going to perform in Panama, just by studying YouTube. I might have, you know, killed off the first two or three, but life's cheap down there. Give the family 50 grand. Next. I'm going to do a brain surgery on YouTube. Where it's not illegal. I've come, I, you know, I've got, uh, you know, I've got vascular surgeons as my partners. I mean, <clears throat> like cutting up a fucking pizza. And then the guy's like this when I'm done with him. Am I irreverent? Yeah. You know, oh, oh, I thought you were okay. Uh, Just so that shining, smiling face. Go ahead. Uh, what do we do with the businesses that they collect cash? So that's not reported, but it's part of the revenue. Yeah, well, you, first of all, you remember in pubs, you got to sit there and make sure it's coming in. And there are, but very few businesses, there's still a few there, but very few businesses are cash businesses now. Now you do your credit card or you do your phone. I don't know, do any of that shit, but anyway. I've, uh, speaking of phones, I have three cell phones for 20, 25 years. I just got uh, uh, rid of one, my, my uh, Asian phone. Uh, I had three numbers, toll free so my kids could call me. In 20 years, I've gotten no phone calls. None, zero on any of the phones. None. So I finally gave up uh, my Asian number. I still have a UK number and a US number. Because my kids don't call up the chit chat. What do you want? How much does it cost? And your question was? Oh, well, I mean, I'd stay away from those. I'd stay away from businesses that collect cash. Too easily fucked. Yep. Some businesses, um, maybe with different backgrounds, they do have different sets of financials. With which well, no, no, see, her ethnicity's coming out now. Legitimate businesses only have one set of financials. Well, no, there's only, uh, Chinese all have three sets of books. Minimum three sets of books. But those, you're not buying those businesses. We're not, you know, this is, we're not, um, one, the only way you do those deals is seller finance, because you're never going to get commercial banking. But I mean, stay away from the too, many, too many headaches with those in the beginning, for sure. In the beginning. Yes, ma'am. She says that she's managing her business, the, the deal he made, she made. Uh, because she wants to grow it. But isn't it better to bring more deals? Of course she is. But, but I mean, some of these businesses, the business that she paid 50 grand for, that cash flowed 1.4 million, she was able to see that because that's the end of the business that she's from. And she saw the stupid doctor, didn't know what he was doing. And so, you know, the, uh, the doctor just wanted out. And again, I would have had him pay me to take that business over. But there's certain things that you can just naturally grow organically very easily. But the main modus operandi of the QLA model is buy top line revenue. That's it. You're buying top line revenue. And of course, you're minimizing expenses where you can. And you're firing all the relatives. I mean, that just goes with, with the part of the story. Sometimes you got to fire everybody. Our intention is not to fire anybody. Intention is the operative word. But when you come in and you find out they're all, when I, um, I love when they start getting laptops years ago. Before they just had the big, you know, screen things in front of you, the big one. 
And as I walk down the aisle and people are closing their laptops, why are they closing their laptops? And then the guy behind me just say, you're fired, you're fired, pick up your check by five. Everybody that closed their laptop, I fired. Every swinging dick. If you've got to close your laptop to the, in front of the new owner, something's not right. Do you understand that? Well, I was a, the, my sick mother. I fuck your sick mother. You're fired. And we're going to show you how to fire people. Some of you live in cities, countries, places. Why we can't fire anybody. Well, fuck you. I'll show you how to fire people. There's not a country, a city, a lot in the world that I can't fire somebody. And it's tough to fire in Sweden and those kind of countries. But I know how. See, you want to believe all the urban legend. Germany is like taking a shit, firing people so easy. Not even constipated shit, just a... But see, you don't, you, you don't learn that with Ty, do you? Because this is the real world, not the happy fucking slappy. We, te we teach you how to make fucking money here. Andreas. Ooh, the Hermans are going to go fucking crazy. That's what you call the Germans back in the world. Jerry's or Hermans? The Hermans are coming. The Hermans are coming. What else about, uh, okay, Captain. 